This is Relentless Daring on Podbean.com. Welcome back to the land of bourbon and bad decisions. This is Relentless Daring live on Podbean.com and the Podbean app. Or you're, or you're just another another podcast listener checking out on your favorite podcast app, which... By the way, if you're using Apple, please be sure to use the uh, five star rating to you know make it more visible to other people who are, who are not following along with the show. Oh my goodness! So, first of all, I need to start off with earlier this week I was on the podcast TV's Rob is Unwoke with Mister Rob Barofsky, and I made a prediction about. Simone Biles and her performance after dropping out of the uh, out of the women's gymnastics team finals event, and it's looking like my prediction is not going quite as well as I expected. Um, she's uh, dropped out of a few more things, so oh, well, you know, sometimes you make predictions. You're wrong. But hey, I can live with that. Because hey, if you're in the world of political punditry and social uh, social commentary, every now and then you're not right. And it takes a little bit to uh, figure out, you know, hey, am, am I doing, am I making the right calls based on what's going on here? I don't know. It's just one of those things, so... Oh, surprise, surprise. But in other news, I do have to send send out a huge congratulations to Mr. LeBron James, the man who thinks that he is Michael Jordan, but sadly, he is not. Yes, uh, in all of his awesomeness, you know, as he changed his number to 23 because... Hey, just like we used to sing in the 90s, I want to be like Mike. He also wants to be like Mike to the point that he was in Space Jam, a new legacy. See, 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 see. And it, like LeBron James, flopped on the court. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It did not do as well as he was hoping. And part of it, Part of the problem with the reason why those box office numbers were so stinking low, yeah, as much as he got down on his knees before President Xi Jinping of China, um, no amount of sucking up, prostrating himself before the Chinese Communist Party, no amount of, well, America's bad, so... uh. You know, like me, because I, like you, think America's bad. Well, President Xi would not allow Space Jam to be shown in Chinese theaters. Whoops. Yeah, that's gotta suck when you're, you know, counting on that international box office, especially... Especially when um, everything just kind of goes to crap. Uh, I'm having to type to the uh, chat room because apparently it's coming through on the live stream all garbledy. Oh my goodness. So, again... Thank you, LeBron, for giving us such great amusement as um, going out there and making a fool of yourself, trying to be like Mike, but then when push comes to shove and you fail miserably at doing a movie, You, the first thing you do is, is you don't blame, well, maybe I'm just not that good of an actor. 
Because let's face it, Michael Jordan is a horrible actor. He's about as good an actor as he was a baseball player. And, well, yeah, but he still, he has this charm. He has this charisma about him that makes it to where you want to like him. As opposed to LeBron, who's kind of an ass. And it's all about LeBron, no matter what he does. You see... But LeBron can't, you know, make things about LeBron when LeBron sucks. LeBron had to uh, make it about something completely different about the movie flopping. It had nothing to do with China. Saying, no, you're not going to air it here. It has nothing to do with HBO Max and Warner Brothers saying, hey, we're going to do a simulcast. We're going to debut it on at the movie theaters, and you can stream it on HBO Max. See, that was where... That was where the huge problem was. Is that... There was kind of like uh, when ScarJo decided she was going to sue Disney because, oh, I was was under my contract. I was going to make all the money from the theaters. Well, unfortunately, I think LeBron was under the, well, well, it's a separate issue. But when it comes to the, uh, why it just, flopped altogether, it had nothing to do with all these things listed. No, no, no. When LeBron was asked for comment on it, even though he was, it was said by the director of the movie, yeah, LeBron kind of sucked. No, it was none of those things. It was Racism. <laughs> Yes, that's right, racism. Because Hollywood has this long, huge history of completely disregarding black actors. I mean, Denzel Washington's only won how many Oscars? He's been only nominated for how many Oscars? Emmys? Golden Globes? You know, there are great black actors. Forrest Whitaker, he can play the goofball. He can play Idi Amin. He's a great, versatile actor. Morgan friggin' Freeman. Now, is it possible that people look at Morgan friggin' Freeman and Forrest Whitaker and, well, they don't talk black. Because Forrest Whitaker has this, you know, kind of a Midwestern thing going. You know, he speaks clearly. He doesn't devolve into, you know, words like axe. He doesn't ax you a question. Morgan Freeman is the voice of freaking God. I mean, there are great actors. I would love to see more you know, black directors who are not activist directors. I, Spike Lee, I mean, come on. Every, everything he does has a political bent to it. So, it, it's really hard to really know where that's going to go. Hold on one second, I'm trying to do things here. Do, 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 do. I have to. I'm trying to get video going up, so it's kind of. Oh, 
such fun times. But there's so many great actors and actresses who are black. But so to say that the movie flopped because racism and <gasps> they can't handle these, uh, they can't handle strong black actors like LeBron James. It is kind of a huge non thing. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts that to blame racism when it's clearly not the problem. The problem is that you, sir, are an asshole. Period. End of story. But what can we expect Expect in a world where LeBron James only cares about one thing, and that's LeBron James. It's the long and short of it. He doesn't care about anyone other than him. And it, it's a sad situation when that's the case. But you can't, but when you can't go around doing anything other than blame, oh, they just didn't want to see a black, black basketball star. They, they wanted to see that white guy over there. I'm, I'm sorry, LeBron, you're one of the biggest names in the NBA right now. And regardless of my opinion on you, of you as a person, you, you bring all the criticism on yourself. There's no one else to blame but you, period, end of story. All right, so... I guess that's all I'm going to say on that because I've got a lot more pressing things to get into other than athletes being dumb. I kind of want to look more at where we are as a country, as a constituency for, you know, supporting our government or maybe not supporting our government. Who knows? Because if you are on the right, it is becoming more and more high risk to be voicing, you know, concerns and discontent with the government. And and I know it it seems a little crazy that I would say that. I mean, I don't want to be the crazy person saying it. Unfortunately, I'm kind of stuck with that right now. The fact of the matter is, the U.S. government is rapidly beginning to turn on its own people. It's not, at this point, you know, locking people up in cages over political disagreements. As long as you don't count the political prisoners who are being held in Washington, D.C. as we speak, you know, in solitary confinement, no bail, and, you know, some are being assaulted and beaten and tortured by the guards. No, aside from those people, no one is being uh, no one's being politically persecuted in the United States unless you're stating opinions that go against the government approved narrative on COVID or the vaccines and the White House has determined that, hey, uh, Facebook, you need to like do something about this because they're saying naughty things. And you know what? If you're going to ban one ban this person from Facebook, then they should be banned off Twitter and everything else too. It's ridiculous. 
It is a totally ridiculous thing. I, I can't explain it. And it's being driven through a new creation of the left of how to isolate and divide us. If you value maximum personal freedom above government authority, if you believe the government has exceeded its constitutional limits, such as, I don't know, the White House, the Biden administration working with private industries to squelch political speech, maybe they have said, yeah, you know, this whole First Amendment thing, it's, it's, it's not a hard, fast rule. It's just a suggestion. If you believe that the government shouldn't be trusted, Congratulations, <laughs> you are a patriot extremist. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, the newest in the world of extremism. It's not just right-wing nationalism. It's not just white supremacy. It's not black nationalism. It's not It's not the black identitarian movement, the white identitarian movement. It's patriot extremism. Ladies and gentlemen, tell me, tell me what you've won. It's... Well, I mean, it's, it's it's hard to define. So I went with, <laughs> you'll have to forgive me because I simply went with who was available and not exactly the best source, but seeing as how they help shape who's considered an extremist, they help shape how we should deal with extremists, you know, whether it's you know, online or at whatever. I went with the ADL definition. Definition, Yes, that's right. The American Defamation League. You know, those people who, if you compare somebody to a Nazi, they get all butt hurt and, hey, that's disrespectful to the Holocaust survivors. You can't call them a Nazi. But if you're a, a right-wing Jewish person like, say, I don't know, Ben Shapiro, and you're on the receiving end of anti-Semitic comments, anti-Semitic threats, you name it, the ADL is like, I don't, I don't have a cricket button for my, for my board, or else I'd hit the crickets because that's what they are. So anyways... ADL definition of the Patriot Movement, which we now all belong to, apparently. Patriot Movement, a collective term used to describe a set of related extremist movements and groups in the United States whose ideologies center on anti-government conspiracy theories. The most important segments of the Patriot Movement include the Militia Movement, the Sovereign Citizen Movement, which I will get back to, the tax protest movement. Though each sub-movement has its own beliefs and concerns, they share a conviction that part or all of the government has been infiltrated and subverted by a malignant conspiracy and is no longer legitimate. Though there is some overlap between the patriot movement and the white supremacist movement, that overlap has shrunk over time. There are, in fact, people of color within the patriot movement, particularly within the sovereign citizen movement. All right, so I was going to circle back to sovereign citizens because sovereign citizens really don't buy into the the kind of you know national populism that really drives you know these other parts of the patriot movement. And I'm using patriot in air quotes because sovereign citizens, um. It's not that they don't recognize the authority of the government over them. They view themselves as a country unto themselves 
And as such, they are not subject to local, state, or federal laws. They are, just by existing, an ambassador and have diplomatic immunity unto everybody. It's so why they're linking this in here, I don't know. It's the ADL. But it's, yeah, if you believe, as many do, that the bureaucratic state, which exists only to protect the bureaucracy, can just undermine the sitting president who is in charge of the executive branch of the government, I don't know. Apparently, that makes you a crazy person. And I can't explain why I can't explain why that makes you, you know, conspiratorial because we saw it under the freaking Trump administration. And it was nuts. And it wasn't like a dark, shadowy cabal meeting to determine the fate of the country. I mean, we had uh, FBI say that Carter Page, they said that he was not a CIA asset, asset, even though the CIA told them, yeah, he's an asset, he's been working with us because he met some people who were he thought was trying to, uh, you know, get him to, you know, spill secrets for stuff. They lied to the FISA court to get a wiretap warrant on an American citizen and then used him, you know, you know, six degrees of six degrees of Carter Page to spy on the Trump and the Trump uh, campaign and the Trump White House as after the election. But, you know, we're the conspiracy theorists. Even though it's been proven, there has been a, ju- or a judge look at, looked at a lawyer and said, you were dumb, smack on the wrist, and sent him on his way. Oh, well, well, he, he got probation because what he did was a, he did a naughty. He, was a, he, he made a boo-boo. And, yeah, we, we should expect some grace. Yeah, um, about that whole grace thing, I do believe in that. But if you are violating the civil rights of United States citizens, you should probably get more than a slap on the wrist. Anytime the DOJ goes after a police officer for violating the civil rights of anybody... Yeah, sure, it's more of a civil thing. But they they don't just give them a slap on the wrist because they violated the civil rights of Rodney King as they beat him with their flashlights. They didn't violate the civil rights. They, you know, they didn't just kind of, you know, you know, whatever, as they... You pick it. Is it. If you are deprived of your civil rights without proper, you know, what's that, what's that expression? Without proper due justice of law? Due process of law? I mean, it's even said. It was later added under the 14th Amendment... Your civil rights cannot be taken without due process of law. And 
Oh, well, uh, they, they had a FISA warrant. Yeah, it was fraudulently obtained. So was there due process? No, it was tainted. Just like if a prosecutor is found out they, they had evidence planted to secure a conviction, what happens to the conviction? It's set aside. Uh, yeah. This is being overturned with prejudice. They cannot come after you again because obviously they didn't have enough evidence in the first place to send you up. They were just looking for a bad guy. They were just looking for a criminal, you know, to fit the crime. But getting back into all of this, you know, patriot movement thing, it's ridiculous what they consider to be part of the patriot movement. You know, you know, <laughs> another well-established, no good, very bad organization. They call this the anti-government. This is the Southern Poverty Law Center. This is a civil rights organization that when it was started many, many moons ago, they actually worked for civil rights. Now they have adopted this whole policy of, well, you know, we're just going to we're going to go after everyone that we don't agree with. I mean, they've labeled historians as white supremacists and terrorists. All because they don't agree with that person's political leanings. David Barton from Wall Builders is considered a terrorist. Um, There was a church organization, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, they fell victim to a to an attack because the Southern Poverty Law Center had them listed as a terror organization. And so someone went full on Bubba, walked in with a gun, started shooting. Thank God he didn't kill anybody. But because they were listed as a terror organization... By the SPLC, yeah. So, why why is this allowed to happen? You know, reading from them, and this is again, like I said, the Southern Poverty Law Center. The Intelligence Project identified 566 extreme anti-government groups that were active in 2020. Down from 576 in 2019. Of these groups, 169 were militias, marked with an asterisk. Down from 181 in 2019. The remainder included common law courts, publishers, ministries, and citizens groups. Generally, such groups would define themselves as opposed to the New World Order. Engage in groundless conspiracy theorizing or advocate or adhere to extreme anti-government doctrines. Listing here does not imply the groups themselves advocate, engage in violence, or other criminal activities, or are racist. This list was compiled from field reports, group publications, the internet, because, as George Washington once said, you can believe everything you read on the internet. I wouldn't lie. Law enforcement sources and news reports. Yes, because sources have never made up anything, ever. It does not document activities that take place only online by individuals or groups, whether on social media, online forums, or websites. Groups are identified by the city, country, or region where they are located and active. And it goes into some key moments. And it specifically mentions um, the attempt to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer. 
which uh, I think they should update that one because most of that was planned and funded and organized not by the this Wolverine group, but by the FBI, by the informants who were infiltrating it. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of terror plots that were, you know, broken up over the years by the FBI, but this starts to ask the question because there have been lawsuits against the FBI, convictions overturned by terror suspects because it was they're able to prove that, you know, it was the FBI that put all of this together and then they, they were going to use us to carry it out. It's, it's just so, uh, I don't know. And these are, you know, yes, a couple of the guys involved in that, they were at the, uh, the protest in Michigan where it says in here, they stormed the Michigan Capitol. No, they had a permitted protest. They told the they told the police who were there that, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be doing an open carry protest. But they were storming the Capitol. It was a precursor to 1-6. And it goes on and on. Uh, let's see. In late... Late August, the shooting of Jacob Blake by a police officer in Kenosha, Wisconsin, led to new Black Lives Matter protests in the state. Militias came out to counter them. On August 25th, police say 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse shot three people, killing two. He claimed he was there to keep the peace. And he's received an outpouring of support from the far right. Or he's receiving an outpouring of support from common sense people. I don't know. Anyways, I'll get back into this after the break. This is Tyler from Relentless Daring, and I am launching the brand new RelentlessDaring.com merch shop. Instead of having to go to a third-party vendor, now you can do everything right there at RelentlessDaring.com. If you want to buy merch, go to RelentlessDaring.com slash shop, and there you can get hats, you can get t-shirts, you can get hoodies, you can get coffee cups, you can get stickers. Go there today to show your love for the Relentless Daring podcast. And as always, stay relentless. Drizzly is the leading home alcohol delivery service available. Imagine being able to sit at home and pull up your smartphone and browse your favorite wine, beer, spirits, and then have it delivered to your home in as little as one hour. Go to drizzly.com or check out the link in the show notes and start shopping today. Not available in all areas. Please drink responsibly. Drizzly.com. Yeah, and so it just keeps going on and on with all the uh, the nuttiness of the whole idea of oh they're anti government. And listen, I I love my country, one hundred percent. I love the people. I love the ideals it was founded on. I hate certain aspects about my country. I hate that presidents like Andrew Jackson, you know, as president, blessed off on the on genocide against Native Americans, that as a citizen, as a volunteer service member, he led parts of the genocide on Native Americans. It's awful. I hate our history. When it comes to racism, when it comes to slavery, 
These are horrible things in our past. That I yes, we should we should confront them. We should go. Hey, uh, we were dumb back then. Because we were. Don't get me wrong. We had some forward-thinking founders. Thomas Jefferson was so appalled at the at the slave trade. And this is a man who owned slaves. That because under the law, he couldn't do anything about it until he died. And even then, because he was in debt when he died, the first things auctioned off wasn't the wasn't the house, it wasn't the livestock, it wasn't the you know, it wasn't any of the wagons or this, that, and the other. It was the slaves. Because Virginia wanted it. And the fact that any of us who will look at the federal government and say, what you're doing is not right, and we voice that on social media, we're having a target painted on our backs. Figuratively. But at some point, it will become literal. And that's scary. When the federal government becomes becomes so scared of its people that instead of saying you know maybe we should uh you know be and keep ourselves in check because you know we kind of answer to those guys they're they're at the point they're so scared of us that they're the White House is putting out flyers on whitehouse.com on how to combat new forms of domestic terror. Or Tara, if your uh, name is Bill O'Reilly. It's absolutely nuts. And I, I found this amazing, amazing write-up from of all places, the Rand Corporation. Uh, anyone who is a fan of crazy conspiracy theories, you know what the Rand Corporation has been involved with. They're a government think tank. Well, uh, one of their writers, Brian Michael Jenkins, he is. Do, 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 do. Senior advisor to the Rand president. He wrote an article that originally was featured on the Hill. Is this and this is going back to February. This is not this is not, you know, what they're talking about right now. But this is he was seeing it, you know, four or five months ago that uh this isn't good. The headline is five reasons to be wary of a new domestic terrorism law. Momentum is building in Congress for legislation to deal with domestic terrorism. Several bills already have been introduced. The mob attack on cap on the Capitol on January 6th, which some analysts argue met the definition of terrorism added a sense of urgency. I've been researching international and domestic terrorism for decades, and I'm leery of this approach. Here are five purely pragmatic reasons to be wary of addressing domestic terrorism with a new law. Fast and Furious makes bad laws. Legislators are understandably angry. They're they're con. They are contending with increased threats of violence to themselves, their staffs, and their families. Unless you're a Republican, then they don't give a rat's anus. That's my commentary, not his, mine. And yes, something must be done to deal with those seeking to intimidate, if not physically harm, public officials. 
but hastily crafted laws are dangerous and often produce unintended consequences. Now, sometimes these unintended consequences, when we stop and say, oh no, what if this happens? Have you ever thought, Brian, that maybe it's not a flaw, but it's a feature? That maybe while we want to think that um, this is a whoops moment when it, came, when it comes to this. No. No, not at all. It was intended. Look at Obamacare. Ah, uh, unintended consequence. Uh, we have to jack up uh, all the, uh, all the regular people's uh, health care costs to be able to handle the uh, paying the subsidies for the people on Obamacare. No, no that, that, that was a feature, not a flaw. They knew that was going to happen because they fully intended to crash Obamacare. That way they would go, oh, man, we just destroyed the... Uh, the national health care system. So, yeah, now we have to nationalize it. That was the intent. But, you know, that's just a crazy conspiracy theory because I am a patriot extremist. Uh, he, goes, he goes on, when uh, RICO was passed following the tumultuous 1960s, no one anticipated it would be applied against anti-abortion protesters or that the federal government would later consider using against members of BLM and Antifa, which it turns out those are pretty good things to use it against because, you know, you know, buying large mansions, that's really... That is a giant Ponzi scheme. Just ask the mother of Breonna Taylor. Who BLM, they used the crap out of Brianna Taylor's name. And how much money did Brianna's family get from BLM? If you guessed anything higher than zero, you guessed way too high. Uh, the USA Patriot Act, which some currently see as a prototype for domestic terrorism legislation, sailed through Congress in three days and enabled a controversial expansion of electronic surveillance over U.S. citizens that the bill's sponsors never envisioned. Number two, First Amendment challenges. Uh, Patriot Act and other international terrorism laws enacted after 9-11 were intended to address specific circumstances. They're not a template for dealing with domestic uh, political violence, which has a completely different historical context. Still, what many in Congress seem to be seeking is a domestic version of the Patriot Act's material support provision, which criminalizes providing material support to a designated foreign terrorist organization. Yeah, which would mean uh, if they went off the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center's definition of what is or is not, a domestic terror organization or an extremist organization. There is a website listed on the, on the great list of all these things that exist in the 50 States. Naming all these, uh, Patriot movement extremist groups. One of them is a place that literally sells custom patches. Yes, that's right. They sell patches. They are a store. They are an online store. Currently, they're working to build a, uh, you know, a tactical training center. Not for themselves, but, you know, so people, you know, the general public can go and learn, you know, tactical defensive shooting. It's a very valuable skill. Not necessarily something you need to, you know, overthrow the government with. I mean, it would help. But that's not the goal of it. These are people who they want to train. That way, if they find themselves in the most god-awful of situations where they have to pull a sidearm 
or they have to defend themselves because, oh, the government did turn dark. They have been labeled extremists, and now they have to defend themselves from their own government. That Maybe they'll have a chance. But, you know. Yeah, there are people in Congress who want to make supporting that group and buying their patches or donating to their training center. That's material support. You're going to jail. Uh, Prosecutors have interpreted material support broadly to include participation in propaganda activities, fundraising, even group membership with no requirement to show any connection to furthering terrorism. The courts have gone along, but in domestic environment, these activities will inevitably raise a legal challenge under the First Amendment. And again, it goes into uh, who gets labeled as a terrorist. Uh, Talk about how it would backfire. Uh, President Trump wanted to designate Antifa as a terrorist organization. Others after the Proud Boys. Others are after the Proud Boys. There are hundreds of extremist groups on either end of the political spectrum, along with other issue-oriented groups that could you know, conceivably be labeled terrorist organizations. Moreover, organization in the domestic context is a slippery term. Some organizations are definable groups. Others are mindsets. According to to just published research by the University of Chicago based on, upon their statements on social media. About 10% of invaders of the Capitol were members of known extremist groups. They came to fight. About 90% were ordinary people who believed they were taking patriotic action to d- prevent the election from being stolen. They were wrong, But there's a risk of tarring a significant slice of the country as affiliating with terrorists. But the goal in dealing with domestic violent extremists is to isolate them from potential constituencies, not broaden the target. In this case, I think it's pretty obvious they want to broaden the target. That's the reason why your people are sharing pictures of on Facebook. You may have been exposed. To extremist content. <laughs> and it's like, why? What is so threatening about people saying, you know, the way the government's really kind of pushing on this thing, I, I think they're a little, I think they're a little uh, out of their depth on that. Or, you know, uh, the FDA really kind of, even with Donald Trump, they really rushed this vaccine, and I don't know if I want to get it because uh, I've got heart condition already, and I, I don't want to risk you know, myo- myocarditis because of the Johnson Johnson or you know Moderna or Pfizer, whichever one I get. And it's and it's sad that you can't have a you can't have a question about you know the efficacy of uh, that we they call it a vaccine really it's it's a uh, it's a medicine it's a uh, um it's a therapeutic because as we're seeing oh well. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, vaccinated people who are having breakthrough cases of the virus. Huh. Weird. Yeah, CNN, they had an article came out. And the same paragraph, arguably spoken with the same breath of air. Uh if I could paraphrase here, because not because the vaccine leads to more variants, everybody needs to be vaccinated. It's like, wait, um, if the vaccine causes this, why do we want everyone to get vaccinated so it causes more variants? I don't know. It's 
so so weird to think that just because someone like me who fought for my country and you know that oath of I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and bear true faith and allegiance to the same, because I still believe that. That's the reason why part of the reason why I do this is because I think there's bad ideas that this is my way of confronting them because I'm not actively involved in politics. I'm not a politician. I don't think I'd make a good politician. I think I'd probably like I'd punch somebody in the face because they're Ah, Tyler, why do you think that this is a good idea? What why is it a bad idea? For ah, reasons. I deal with enough stupid on a day-to-day basis. I would hate to be a politician having to deal with that level of dumb. But the fact of the matter is, we're being pushed and pushed and pushed further and further into a corner. And we know what happens with wild animals when they get pushed in the corners. They eventually are left with no choice but to defend themselves. I do not want to see any violence visited on anybody. I know some people who would love and I mean love to see a hot civil war. I am not one of those people. If it came to it, I would have to ask myself, there'd be 100% sure that whoever it is rebelling against the central federal government is, is right. I don't want to be that, that lukewarm person who's, you know, oh, I'll wait to see who's winning before I determine who I'm going to support. Because that's no way to be. Eventually, riding the fence uh, always ends up badly for your backside. And the idea that, you know, our federal government, and we're starting to see with the COVID thing, a friend of mine shared a thing on Facebook about the vaccine or about the uh, steps of government uh you know, government uh manipulate manipulating you you know first is you know they ask nicely and then they then they uh see they ask nicely they and offer an incentive or a bribe I don't I don't have it readily available, but you know, we are starting to see get the, one of the stages on there is threats. Do it or else. And we're starting to see that. Maybe it's something they can't, you know, forcibly do at the moment. But you know, you have Bill de Blasio. Oh, but in the other house, just second, yeah. Mayor of New York coming out and saying that, you know, <laughs> you know, we tried nice, we asked nicely, now we just need to go knock on doors and knock on doors and, you know, like, no, you're going to do it. Andrew Cuomo, governor of the state of New York, you know, you need to take take people, put them in vans, and go you know put shots in arms. Wait, you're you're going to kidnap me and force me to take a medical treatment against my will? 
<laughs> uh, you can try it. You can try it. Or even, you know, Geraldo Rivera. One of the things he mentioned in his tirade the other day was that, you know, the you, know, you can't get to the VA. Whoa. Hold up. First of all, Geraldine, let's slow our roll just a smidge. Number one, you don't have room to speak for the U.S. government. Number two, veterans are not going to take you seriously because you were the jackass who did the incredibly dumb thing during the invasion of Iraq where, well, here's the border and here's how the how these troops go move up through here, and you did it on TV. It was broadcast. You broadcast troop movements. You stupid son of a snitch. And Geraldo Rivera is going to tell veterans they can't get treatment at the VA? I'm sorry, who in the F are you? Geraldo Rivera. Last time I checked, Geraldo, you are not a veteran. Yes, you have been to war zones, but you are not a veteran. There are veterans who the only lifeline they have for medical care is that VA hospital. And you're going to say you can't go in there for treatment if you don't have the damn shot? What are you going to do? Are you going to, are you going to stand outside the uh, Truman VA clinic or uh, hospital in Columbia? Wait for me to show up and say, sorry, you're not getting the shot. You're not getting in. I dare you, Geraldo. Try it. Show up. Stand in front of the door. Put your hand up. Tell me I cannot come in. The next time I have to be up there. And I will see how quickly your face bounces off the side of the building. I'm sorry. But if you're going to tell veterans that, yeah, you know, you, we, you have these maladies that were incurred upon you by your service to the country, but oh, because you won't get this shot, you can't get them treated. Oh, boy. Then revoke my freaking disability rating yeah the money's nice but if the government's not going to recognize what my body went through in service of it and service of these people who live here so that they wouldn't have to send their own child off to war be or so they wouldn't have to go themselves because hey it's an all voluntary all volunteer force Do you know what? I don't give a damn. There are politicians who have never thought once about picking up that rifle and serving their country. They will. There are politicians who would steer their children as far away as they can from the military. And right now, they have a we have a Secretary of Defense who, if you saw the picture of him the other day, wearing a mask and a face shield. While fully vaccinated and fist bumping a doctor. Not shaking his hand, fist bumping. You're the Secretary of Defense for the greatest army this world has ever known. And you're going to have three to four layers of virtue signal. Meanwhile, if you have soldiers in your ranks that, oh my God, they're the least bit conservative and they, they, they won't stand for a CRT, get them the hell out. There's threats of... Threats of dishonorable discharge if soldiers don't get the freaking vaccine? 
I'm sorry, Roe versus Roe, excuse me, Doe versus Rumsfeld. Landmark court case decision that said the the says that the Pentagon cannot force soldiers to get vaccines that are under an emergency use authorization. That was about anthrax vaccine. But you know what? We look at the courts. We venerate the courts because the courts are almighty. The courts, the courts, the courts. Allow a soldier to anonymously file suit against the United States Department of Defense. And Secretary Lloyd Austin. And then you bring that up as this is the foundation for our suit. It was determined once. Are we going to turn our backs on it now? Since when does judicial supremacy and that ever, ever so popular thing known as case law, case precedent, since when is it being overturned? And I know, saying this, saying all these things that, oh my God, did he just say that? Did he just call out the Secretary of Defense? Yes, I did. And if saying that gets me put on a list, good. I'm sure there are better people on that list than anyone who is helping to create that list. Some spineless limp-wristed, needle-dick son of a gun who has nothing better to do. Oh, I just got to put this on the paper. I just got to write this list up because the boss told me. Uh, excuse me, Bob, do you, uh... Do you particularly agree with putting people on lists because they don't agree with the way, uh... You know, the leadership of... This branch of government performs? Not really, because, you know, uh, they're not coming after me because I'm not doing anything wrong. And they won't come after you until you are doing something wrong. Because the people who are setting these rules can change the rules at any time as long as it makes them retain power. All right, so I went a little long on this one, and I still didn't even finish up because I could just go forever on this whole idea of being a patriot extremist. Loving your country so much, you become extreme. But again, for those of you who are hoping to hear this on the live on the live cast, I apologize. I don't know what happened there. I... Uh, Everything was showing good internet connection, but for some reason it just was coming across as garbled. Um, I apologize. Maybe next week will be better. We'll see the joys of living in the boondocks with download sometime later internet. But for those of you who are listening to this on podcast, remember like I said at the beginning of the show, please leave those five stars. Five stars lets people helps people like you find the show. Then after you, well, first of all, you better subscribe. Please, please subscribe. I ask humbly on bended knee that you subscribe to the show. Get my numbers up. I appreciate it. Thanks. Then second, you know, the rating. Then number three, leave a review. Let people know what you think about the show. Embellish a little. Don't get crazy with it. You know, you don't need to talk about how, you know, Tyler's opinion just gave me everything I need to survive in this crazy mixed up world we're in. I don't need none of that. You know, go Stuber gear. Eh, it's great. Whatever. I can live with that. It's awesome. And finally, the last thing I want you to do, please share the podcast. 
Share it with someone who you think will like it. Share it with someone who you think will hate it. I, I will take whatever listens I can get. Please? Will you please? Thanks. Oh, my gosh. And please be sure to support the show. Check out the links to our partners in the uh, show notes. Drizzly, Built Bar, My Patriot Supply. You buying from them makes me money, which keeps the show on the air. Also, you can, if you also would like to support the show directly, you can go to RelentlessDaring.com. At the top of the page, you will see a Donate Here button that will take you to PayPal. And then you can PayPal me money. You can do a one-time donation, or you can set up a recurring monthly payment. Keep in mind, this is not a not-for-profit show, so donations are not tax. Are not, uh, you can't write them off on your taxes. I'm sorry. Anyways, again, thank you so much for listening this week. Putting up with me while I go off on LeBron James and his um, stupid movie excuse. And, again, as I ranted about being a patriot extremist, an extreme patriot, or possibly patriot extreme sports where you have people flying mega flags while skateboarding through a half pipe. I don't know. This is all new to me. I've never been, I've never been labeled as an extremist for my political beliefs before. So, Hey, anything, anything is uh, possible again. Thank you so much for listening. And as always stay relentless. This is Relentless Dairy on Podbean.com.